Hi guys, good morning, and welcome to my knitting podcast. My name is Mandy, and you can find me on the internet as Mandy Von Knits on Ravelry, Instagram, and Goodreads. I am a 39-year-old woman from southeastern Michigan. I live here with my husband and my two kiddos, and I love all things involving fiber arts. So I knit, I crochet, I have a couple of knitting machines that I've been neglecting a little bit and I would love to learn how to weave. I have not looked into spinning but I'm sure I would love that too. So I have been knitting for nine years and crocheting for about 13 now and I've been loving yarn pretty much since I first began. I have some interesting things to show you this week. I have one finished crochet object that my daughter has since claimed. In fact, she kind of pushed me into the room today and said, Mom, I need you to record your podcast so I can have that thing you made. <laughs> and I have some knitting to show you as well. I have been busy working on Christmas sweaters. Christmas sweater. That's singular, but I'm going to be ready to cast on another one here pretty soon. And as usual, I have patterns to show you because I love to bring you guys things that have interested me that I found looking throughout Ravelry or just on Instagram or the internet plain in general. Things come into my email and, you know, it. I just go down rabbit holes. So if that sounds like something interesting to you, please stick around. I would love to have you. So first things first, I am going to talk about admin. And I am going to put in a blank spot right here. And that blank spot should be the winner of this week's pattern prize. Now, if you're new here, you should know that every week I give away a pattern prize. The prize has to be under $15 US and it you can only win once a month. The way that you win is by just leaving a comment down below. It can be whatever you want. And next week, stop by again and I will draw a winner out of the previous week's comments and leave them up on the podcast. So if I drew your name and I showed it up on the screen, please reach out to me on either Instagram or Ravelry and let me know what pattern you want. Um, and also, if you don't use Ravelry, let me know that too and we can figure out how to get you your pattern. Okay, with all of that said, let's move on to what I'm wearing because this is one of my favorite ones. This is the Lace and Fade Boxy by Hohi Locatelli. This is a tremendously, I mean, obviously you guys can tell, right? You have eyes. This is a tremendously oversized sweater. And let me tell you a story. I did not think I would be the type of person to ever like this sweater. I've seen it before. I, I've seen it before many times. I saw it and I was just like, you know, that's too oversized. I. I mean, I'm short. I, I just, I felt like I just wouldn't like it. But I decided one year that after this pattern came out that I had, I was just, I was going to give it a try. And I had these very pretty colors. These are colors from Blackbird Sycamore Yarn. Um, I cannot remember most of the colors, but if you check out my Ravelry page and I'll put up a link, I will have mentioned the colors. And I just thought that they went so well together. And the white mohair I thought was really pretty too. So I decided to give it a, you know, give it a college try. And if worse came to worse, I could just rip it out and make something else. Now, I had had experience with this because I actually tried using this yarn to make a windswept by Tin Can Knit and I didn't like it. Uh, and it wasn't, a, it was more that the yarn weight that I picked, because this is fingering, the yarn weight that I picked was too light 
and the windswept is a heavier weight yarn and I wasn't holding it double because I thought, hey, I'm going to work with what I have and kind of modify it. Well, I kind of gave up on that and I it ended up for the best because I really love the way that this lace and baby boxy came out. And as for how oversized it is, I thought that it would bother me, but it does not. It feels as though it's the world's most comfiest yet nicest oversized sweatshirt. So it's very relaxed and I love the way that it fits, but it's also pretty dressy. So I've, I, I just really like it. I made this when did I make this? I, I'll have to put it down below because I honestly don't remember. I think I've had it done for a year, a year or so now, and I've definitely gotten wear out of it. I can wear it out to dressier occasions, and I can wear it right here, and I can wear it to my kid's school where it might not be that dressy, but it still looks fine. So I really do like this pattern and if I had a choice I would make another boxy. I think I would make the v-neck boxy and I might even try to make the v-neck boxy but with the lace as well because I have both patterns but I'm kind of getting ahead of myself because if you guys are new here, that's kind of what I do. I sit and daydream like the entire day about what I'm going to knit next and how I'm going to modify it and all sorts of things and we just go down rabbit holes. Okay, so like I promised, the first thing that I have to show you is my crochet finished object. Now, last week, I showed you this pattern that I bought off of Etsy and this is by Cro Creative Mama Crochet and they are Christmas cat gnomes. So looking at this picture, can you guess the one that I made that my daughter is now trying to take from me? If you guessed the one with the ruffle hat, you would be right because that's the one I decided on. Now, to be fair, on my daughter's part, I did decide that I was going to make kind of a prototype of this because in the past I've had difficulty putting amigurumi together. Now, I tend to do better with amigurumi when it's no-so patterns or they give you specific instructions on how to attach the pieces, as in while you're crocheting a body, it gives you a round to crochet the legs to the body. I think you guys know what I mean. So I knew that this was not one of those patterns and that I would actually have to crochet like ears and a tail and legs and then sew them on after. So I wanted to do a prototype. And I'm happy that I did and I'm going to explain to you why. But first, this is how the crochet cat gnome looks. And I think that it came out really cute. I really like the holly and I think you can actually tell what it is and I really love the face and you can see the cute little tail and it's just cute. Now one thing that wasn't apparent to me about this pattern is that it uses beads and you sew the beads on to the hat. So you need beads for this pattern. I did not know that but luckily my daughter has beads because she loves making like the bracelet kits and things like that. She loves doing that. So I took some beads from her, but they were flat beads. So I'm like, hmm, what am I going to do? Because I didn't want to, what didn't I want to do? I, 
they were flat beads and in order to sew them on you would see white thread. I have nylon thread somewhere but I don't know where it is. So in the end I just hot glued them now. What I would change about this, because there are some things after all, I kind of knew that I was going to struggle with a pattern like this just because I don't have a ton of expertise and a ton of practice in making amigurumi. So I struggled with the ear placement. Now the pattern tells you the exact rounds to place the ears, but this cat is black. So the cat is black, the yarn is fingering weight, and the hook size was two millimeter. Now the pattern calls for 1.75 millimeter, and there was no way I was using that. It was so small that I could not form the stitches with that hook. So I stuck with two millimeter. I think it still came out okay, but I will need to work on the ear placement for the next two that I make. Let's see. I will also need to pay specific attention to the size of the hat and the depth of the cat. So if you look right here, you can see that her, she she's awfully, she's not as big as I would like. I think that she just needs a little bit more height to kind of, um, sit better especially with how big uh-oh her ear came out especially with how big the hat is my daughter did not want me to either sew she didn't want me to sew the hat on so she really does love this cat I ended up for the beads, I ended up hot gluing them. The reason that I did that was just because I didn't want to see the thread. I have since ordered better beads that I think will work better. Um, they're not the flat kind, so I'm pretty sure that I will be able to lay them in such a way that I'll be able to hide the thread. Let's see, what else can I tell you about this? I really like the face. I think that I did a pretty good job on the the line under the nose. And all in all, I thought it was a really cute pattern. Like I said, I will have to work on my ear placement, but my daughter is happy. She loves it. Now, um, I ordered a couple, like it was a pack of organza bags. And I ordered them because this has beans in it, uh, the stuffing, polyfill, plastic beads. And you don't want to put those in an amigurumi without some sort of container holding them. This seems like common sense. Apparently, I don't have common sense today because I didn't realize that. And now every, like, I had to make sure I reinforced the magic uh, circle round the very beginning of the crochet because beads fell out and I managed to kind of tie it up, but I'm making two of these to be gifts. I'm going to be making one of this one and one of this one as a set to give as a gift and I wanna make sure that they're a good quality gift. So I went with organza because I figured that it was going to be washable even though I'm you're not probably going to wash it, at least it will be washable, and it should keep the beads in nice, safe, and secure. So that is my thought. Now as for how I'm going to go about making the next two, I'm probably going to do it uh, kind of like an assembly line. So I will work two bodies, um, the two round ball bodies. I think I had the ball that I showed you guys last week. So I'll work two of those and then I'll work four ears, you know, four legs, two tails, and then the hats. 
and I'm going to do that because I really want to get the parts with the black yarn done first because let me tell you it is a pain in the butt. It is very hard to see. I had a lamp above my head like beaming right down. I had a headlamp and I had one of those lamps that go around your neck and I'm still struggling to see this black yarn. So it is hard and of course you can do it in any, I mean any color, but I just thought that the black looked so nice and I could have done it in like a white, but the hat needs to be white and you don't want to like completely wash out the like, it, it, I just think that the stark contrast between the two looks best. It might look good with like an orange cat, which I think would be cute. But I think it would have to be like a bright orange. Something that would be a very stark contrast. Maybe a blue. Like what would happen if you did this in blue and dark blue? And then instead of like a holly, you somehow did like a blue winter flower. I'm sure there's a blue winter flower. I'm not a flower person, so I don't know. But I'm just thinking, instead of like Christmas vibes, it could be like winter vibes, right? But I, this is my first cat gnome. This is my first gnome, like in general. And I would call it a success barring in mind the things that I'm going to need to kind of adjust for the next one. For this crochet amigurumi, it, I used a combination of Elise Cotton Gold. It's a fingering weight cotton acrylic. I believe it's 55%, 45%. And they just have a bunch of different colors for that. And I also use Yarn Art Jeans. Um, and that is also a crochet cotton. Well, I don't want to say crochet. It's also a fingering weight cotton. And it is 55, 45 as well. So I'm not used to using such a teeny tiny hook. I have made like the big blanket amigurumis before. And I've made worsted weight ones. But... I think for the last two were really the first time that I've thought about using fingering weight and I do like the the miniature like what am I trying to say I do like the fine detail uh, that fingering weight gives you not that worsted weight doesn't but you can use just a smaller hook and everything is a little bit more compact I hope you guys know what I mean when I say that so I ordered some more of the white yarn and actually this is a good talking point because this yarn this white yarn was yarn that I had already this was yarn art jeans and it was a white that I had left over the pattern calls for Elise cotton gold in white but I didn't order that because I already had white yarn so this time when I ordered it I actually ordered the Elise Cotton Gold. Um, it's number 55. So this will be kind of a good compare contrast to see if there's that much different. Maybe the hat will fit a little bit better using that different brand. So I guess we'll see. I, I do think it's pretty cute though. And obviously my daughter does too. The yarn... The white yarn that I ordered, the Elise Cotton Gold, was around $6. So I think that that's a pretty good deal for 100 grams of cotton weight fingering. And if you're using it to make amigurumis, it will last quite a bit. Now, interestingly enough, this is the only other project I have to show you guys this week. It's not that I've been slacking either. It's that I have been working on the crochet gnome, but also I've been trying to concentrate on Christmas. Like, it's November. It's November 9th. I'm filming this on a Saturday, by the way. I'm filming it on a Saturday because tomorrow's all 
busy and messed up so I wanted to make sure I got this in. It is November 9th which means that Christmas is just around the corner. The holidays are coming up. We've got Thanksgiving in the U.S. on I believe the 28th. It's the I think the last Thursday in November but we've got everything coming up and time's going to be getting short here to get Christmas sweaters done. So this is what I have for my son's Christmas sweater so far. And as you can see, since the last time you saw it, I believe it's grown quite a bit. I have just started on the ribbing. Now this pattern is Tin Can Knits the Flax Sweater. This is knit in fingering weight yarn, so it would be considered the flax sock. And from this is the size for this is the adult small. So from the underarm to the start of the ribbing is 13 inches. Now, the thing that I love about this pattern, besides the fact that it's amazing and it's free, is that you get all of the sizes for this pattern. And if you download their app, then you can basically start your own project, pick your own options, and pick your size, and it will give you all the numbers custom to you. Now, for this flax, I went with option two for the neckline, which is basically, I'm going to cast on immediately and then start to increase. So basically bypass the ribbing. So I did that and then once I got a little farther down into the increases, I picked up and I knit the ribbing for the neck. I did that because I'm knitting with a gradient and I didn't want to ruin the flow of the sweater. For this, it's not like I can go back after I'm done knitting everything and then pick up the neck band. But depending on what type of yarn you use, you guys might be able to do that. So for my son, this is an adult small, extra small. It's an adult extra small. I'm sorry if I said small. So he is 13 years old and I did the short rows for him. So for flax, the way that the short rows work is that you knit all the way down until you are about ready to split for sleeves and then you're going to knit your short rows. They give you complete instructions for the short rows and then you go ahead and you basically join the sweater together and knit in the round until you're done. And I just love the way this is coming out. This yarn is from Mouth Switch Yarns, and I will give you a link to Mandy's uh, Kofi, Kofi shop. Yes, Kofi, sorry. For some reason, I always want to say Kofi um, to her Kofi shop, but she dyed this gradient, and I think that it came out amazingly. I have another gradient that I'm going to use to make my daughter a sweater, and in a couple of minutes, I'll talk about that, but let me finish with this first. So one of the aspirations that I have for the sweater is this. Uh, do you see how it kind of slowly transitions to the dark down here? For the sleeves, I want to make the transition faster. So it will go from lighter and a greater portion of the sleeve will be darker. And I just think that that will give it kind of a, a neat look. And I love the way that those, those colors at the bottom look. They're so pretty. I think that if it fades faster through the sleeves, it will be really cool. So that's my, that, those are my delusions of grandeur. Let's hope I can, you know, get through it and kind of manage my yarns because I'm I'm using mini skeins, right? And sometimes yarn management can be really hard. So I'm going to have to really pay attention and I have a mini, like one of those mini scales and I can definitely do that. I will, what I will do is I will take the remaining amount of each mini skein that I have and kind of weigh it, divide it in half 
and knit half for each sleeve. And we'll just see where that takes me. But I've shown this to him and he is very happy with it. He's excited. Uh, you know, as excited as a 13 year old boy is going to be for a sweater. Obviously not like my daughter who's trying to, to beat down my door to get the cat gnome. She wouldn't be excited. I mean, she'd like a sweater, but you know, if she had a choice between a cat gnome and a sweater, you guys know which one she's going to pick. Obviously, right? But that is what I've been working on. I have not worked on my Kivy at Cowl because I've been trying so hard to get stuff for Christmas going. And I really want to make these two gnomes for Christmas gifts and work on the sweaters for Christmas gifts. So those are going to be my main focus for at least a little bit until I'm almost done with that. And then I can pull back out the cowl and start talking about my awesome plans for both the new year for color work and for beginning to start to kind of dip my toe in brioche because I have wanted to kind of teach myself brioche, not only brioche, but two color brioche because I've done brioche before with hats, but it was one color. I want to do two color, and I have a specific pattern in mind. I know I've mentioned it before, but I really want to knit the brioche hug, and I even have the yarn for it, and it's gray and rainbow colored, and I, I love it, and I hope you guys love it too, but that's, that's where my mind is. Um, so, I need the sleeve still for the flax for my son, but I'm going to put up a picture right here and show you the gradient that I have for my daughter's flax, which should still be a flax. As far as I know, it's going to be a flax. I had thought for a little bit about making her uh, a little boxy, but the problem with that is that I just don't know if I have it in me to get a little boxy done before Christmas for her. I, real talk, right? I, I wanted to get myself a Christmas sweater done as well. And if I do her a little boxy, then I think that that's just going to be it. What I want to do is... And I believe I showed you guys this on either last podcast or the podcast before is knit her a Montrose Petite Cardigan. I, Montrose Petite Cardigan, I think. Junior Cardigan. I'm putting it down below. It's a beautiful cardigan. And I was looking at the pattern and I love it. And I'm definitely going to make that for her sometime in the future. And it's going to have to be pretty soon because it will be the perfect cardigan for her to wear to school. And if I can make it in just one color, that means she can wear it. She wears uniforms, um, so she can only wear one color sweaters or one color cardigans. Which is no big deal, but... It's just something you have to be aware of. But I I know I put up the picture of the... See, I'm all over the place today. I know I put up the picture of the gradient. That is another gradient from Mouse with Yarns. And it's beautiful. It goes on one side. You have pinks and the pale pinks and the yellows and the light blues and the blues and I just think it's the sweetest colors. Whenever I saw that I'm like there are no other colors that represent my daughter more than this. So I am hoping to make her a, a flax that's going to be oversized on her on purpose. I'm doing the same thing for my son so that they will get hopefully a very long time out of these sweaters and yeah because right now my daughter is in about a 910 
I'm probably gonna look at making her two sizes up. For my son, I have actually measured him and that is going to, what we have on him is going to be pretty well fitted for him. He's older and I'm trying to think of how to say this. He's not growing as fast as my daughter because she's still in like that, I'm a little kid and I'm growing super fast stage. So he's growing, but like he's growing taller instead of like outwards like uh, little kids do. Okay, so I did some research this week and I did it on purpose. Um, I have been looking at some of the patterns that I found. First of all, I have um, several patterns to show you and I went through and grabbed some more from previous winners. So if it's a pattern that came from a previous winner, I will make sure to mention it. The only re they're not in order, so I don't wanna kind of shuffle through the papers and make lots of loud, annoying, crinkly noises. I will just let you know if it is one, so that way you guys are aware. So the first pattern that I'm going to talk about is one that I did research on. This pattern came to me from Barocco. I get their newsletter and you might want to sign up for it too. They send, I think, patterns every week, either a free pattern or a paid for pat, not advertising a paid for pattern with maybe a, a coupon code. And this is the pattern that they sent this week. This is a Vesper by Alice in Green. Now, I think that this is really pretty and I wonder if I can show you. Yes, that's the one I want to show you. Do you see how the cables go around the neck? I think that that's so pretty. Um, this is, I believe, one of two that do this that I'm going to show you today. It's all across the back of the shoulder. Now this uses a yarn called Barocco Hearthside. And I have never heard of that yarn before, so I went and I did I did some research. It's a bulky weight yarn and it is 152 yards for 100 grams. And it's $18 uh, 100 grams. So I did the math and in order for the medium size, I picked directly down the middle. I'm like, well, I don't want to do something that might not pertain to anybody or anybody on one side or the other side. So I picked a size right down the middle. And in order to knit the middle size, you would need nine balls of $18 yarn if you use this yarn. So that is $162. So I started looking for a lower cost option because $162 for a sweater is a lot of money and might not be in everybody's budget. So I ran across a yarn that's called Katia Echoes. And if you guys have ever heard of it or used it before, please let me know. It is 142 yards for 100 grams. Now it's sold in 50 grams. So it would be $4.95 for 50 grams, which would basically make it $89.10 for that same middle size. And I hope my math is right, but it's going to be pretty ballpark in that figure. Now, I know that Barocco has kits that are available at different shops, so that might be an option as well. I've never used the Hearthside, so if you guys have down in the comments used either Hearthside or the Echoes, just let me know so we can figure out kind of what yarn, what's the the usage like on the yarn, how does it wear, and just different characteristics about the yarn. I did, when I looked up the Katia Echoes, they did mention that it kind of uh, 
fuzzed out a little bit, but they were expecting that eventually it would stop. So it is less, but depending on what's more important to you, you kind of got to give and take with it. The yarn weight is a bulky on this pattern. The gauge is 15 stitches and 23 rows is four inches in stockinette stitch. Now the yardage that you need is between about 1100 yards and 2000 yards. And your bust size is 35 to 71 and a half inches, which is 89 to 181 and a half centimeters. This pattern just came out. It's a November 2024 pattern release. It says it's a mock turtleneck. I've been looking up all different sorts of things today. I've, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit later, but I am not sure what the definition of a mock turtleneck would be. Is it just a turtleneck that doesn't go up as high as a normal turtleneck? What would make it mock in this case? It Inquiring minds need to know these things. That's why I love Google. Do you guys remember when you were, um, uh, previously when you had to look up like encyclopedias for every, you had to use encyclopedias for everything? I, I can't even imagine that anymore. Okay, it says Vesper is a stunning sideways knit sweater with a delightful mix of trapezing cables and soothing saconette. Knit in alpaca wool and cotton blend Barocco hearthside. This pullover will be warm and lightweight, perfect for pairing with outfits from casual to chic. Vesper is worked in one piece that begins at one sleeve, travels towards the center of the body before working over to the opposite sleeve. Seams at the sides and undersides of the sleeves transform this piece into a cozy pullover and rib hems and collar add the perfect finishing touches. I just, I love sweaters that have unique constructions. To me, it makes it so much more interesting if you're knitting something in a way that's new to you that you've never tried before and sideways construction is so much fun. If you watched one of the recent previous episodes about my where I was wearing the Radvent cardigan, that's also knit sleeve to sleeve, so very cool. Okay, I, I'm kind of thinking that you guys have probably heard about this because uh, Rebecca Clow is a huge designer and everybody loves all of her patterns, but I saw this and I've always wanted to make a wrap cardigan. I just haven't. This is called the Ka the Cara Wrap Cardigan by Rebecca Clow. It just came out and it is knit in a DK weight gauge. The, um, the pattern is using fingering and lace held together. Now take a look at this. This reminds me of just a really pretty ballet top. Now, I was looking at the pattern pictures on the page, and the one thing that I very much appreciate with her patterns is how many different body types she shows her patterns on. Now, uh, they're all different, and they all look beautiful, and it's just so great to see that. So, this the yardage that you need for this is between 728 and 1975. The sizes available are, let's see, finished chest circumference, eight, between 80 centimeters and 170 centimeters. And that equates to, to 31 and a half to 67 inches. Hmm. Have you guys ever made a ballet, like a wrap cardigan like this? And have you made it with less ease? Have you made it with more ease? I'm thinking that I would love to make one of these a, with a little bit more ease than show than shows on the pattern pictures because I just love when things are comfy cozy. It says the Cara wrap is an elegant wrap cardigan 
with satin sleeves and I-cord edgings. The wrap is worked from the top down with two bust shaping options and waist shaping options. It comes in two lengths, a cropped and a full length, and can be knit with short or long sleeves. So the sizing recommended is between 0 and 5 to, or 0 and 2 inches of positive ease is recommended, meaning that you should pick a size that is that sized larger than your upper chest measurement. Bust shaping is included for those with greater than 5 to 2 inches of difference between upper full and upper bust. So she also gives you the yardage requirements for all the different options, which is really cool. So if you're looking at this pattern and you say, hey, I want to make the crop short sleeve, well, then you can come down here and look on the pattern page and say, hey, I know that I'm going to need ballpark around this amount of yarn, which is really cool for somebody like me who would always make like the long with like the long sleeves because I'm cold all the time. But this came out in November of 2024 as well. And when I saw it, I just wanted to give it a little bit of mention because I thought that it was really cool. Okay, so this is my crochet uh, mention, I guess, for the day because I saw this and kind of went down a rabbit hole. So, um, this is called the Echoes Cardigan and it's by Rachel Misner. And I love this. This is so oversized and so comfortable. And it is knit with a yarn called Lion Brand Mandala. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but it's a DK weight yarn and it's color, uh, yeah, it's color changing. We're going to go with that word. It doesn't graduate slowly. It just, it's more like stripey. At least, yeah, more like stripey. That's what we're going to go with. The sizes available are between extra small and 5X. The yardage that you need is between 1850 to 3240. And the crochet terminology is US. Now, the cool thing about this pattern is that you can buy this and everything you need as a kit on Lion Brand. And boy, did I go down a rabbit hole looking at that. So, Lion Brand runs sales on their kits all the time. So, for instance, right now they have 30% off all of their kits. So if you said, hey, I want to go to Lion Ran, knit the, I want to get the kit for this, you could click a button, depending, you could pick your size, click the button, add it to the cart, and use the coupon code. Now, if you did that without the code, the pattern kit starts at $35.96. I think that goes up to a size medium. And the pricing on the kits go all the way up to I $53.94. That's either a 50, I think it's a 53. If it's not, I'll put it down below. It's either a three or an eight. I'm pretty sure it's a three. But that's before you take the 30% off into account. So keep that in mind. That's a pretty good deal for a cardigan. Um, that's actually a very good deal to make a cardigan. So it says, introducing your new favorite layering piece. The Echoes Cardigan combines the unique beauty of randomly shifting mandala yarn colors with a delightful pop of texture. The oversized pockets are as cozy as they are practical, perfect for adding a bit of style to any outfit. With an included video tutorial, you'll find it easy and enjoyable to create this standout design. The pattern is free on her blog. You can um, also buy, you can go to Ravelry and also buy the pattern without the ads. And if you purchase the kit on Lion Brand, you get a printout of the pattern as well. So I have been a big fan of Lion Brand Mandala because 
my children are my children as they were growing up could be very rough on things and mandala was very very good to them we could take everything that they wore and just toss it right in the washer and dryer and it would turn out okay which is perfect when you have kids now that they're older it's much better but you know for those first like seven years or so mandala was awesome it still is i would definitely still make i was very very like i kept looking at that cart and i'm like this this whole cardigan is going to be like 20 something dollars. How can I turn that down? But I did because I have I have enough. I don't need more yarn. Okay. This is the Knitvent vignette. So, this is the first Knitvent pattern of Knitvent. Yeah. Those words make sense. So, if you heard previously, I was talking about the um, Knitvent. It is basically, I believe, six patterns. You buy the uh, collection off of Ravelry and it was on sale and might still very well be on sale. And um, you basically every week will get a release pattern, kind of like a knitting pattern advent, which I thought was really fun. Now, this was the first one that came out. This, it, this says it's um, designed to use a yarn advent calendar or gradient set, but it's a flexible pattern that you can really use any yarn you choose. It would look wonderful made from a heap of reimagined scraps from many past product projects or a curated set of special skeins from your stash. This pattern includes both a wrap and a square throw version, your choice, with cozy squishy garter sections interspersed with a simple but evocative wavy eyelet lace repeats. Vignette is a is comfort knitting on a grand scale. A neat I-cord border gives the piece a modern finish and I've created several quick and easy tutorials to help. So this is designed to use an advent and I think it's so pretty. And you can make it a square or a rectangle and I think that that picture and I'm going to make sure Editing Mandy, make sure you put the picture, the color picture of that right there so that they can see what you're talking about. Um, I think that this picture right there is just is so comfy, cozy. Like I never, I can never see myself making a wrap or like a, a big oversized shawl. But when I see that right there, I kind of think, yeah, I could do that. Definitely. But I told you guys that I would share the um, Knitvent patterns and that was the first one that came out. So, okay. This is a pattern that got picked from a previous winner. And this is called the Airson Fur by Corinne Walcher. So this is a beautiful um, cabled Sorry, I'm trying to think of how to say these words. This is a beautiful masculine um, cabled sweater. And I think that it looks great. And look at all of those very, very difficult cables. Uh, I don't think they're very, I, I'm not very difficult, but do you guys know how when you've got a whole cable, like a whole sweater full of cables, you're like, ah, yes. That would be one of these patterns, but it looks so so great and oh man that this like if I could get my husband to wear a sweater I would make him this I think it's gorgeous so this is knit with DK weight yarn and the gauge is 20 stitches and 24 rows the yardage you need is between 1,300 and 1,900 yards, and the sizes available are between 40 and 52 inch chest. So it says the Airson fur pullover was designed for Josh, the dyer of red stag fiber. His beautiful, tight, twisted, 
blue face leicester yarn is the real star in this sweater which features heavy cabling with seed stitch it is designed for men but anyone can wear it i would love to make this oversized i'm a big fan of like the no shaped sweaters if you if you couldn't tell from looking at the boxy but i would have no qualms with wearing something like this it's beautiful it says that the purse the picture on the pattern page was a 44 size sample modeled on a 40 inch chest so the pattern writer recommends sizing up cables can pull in quite a lot and that is the case especially with all over cables like that i don't think i've made the closest i've came come to oliver sweater uh oliver cable sweater would probably be fickle hearts so but i think that that's a beautiful pattern it says that it's got a written pattern cables chart modified drop sleeve and um i would love to do that one too okay here's another winner's pattern and these are the be creative mittens and i have only made a couple of mittens in my life and the first thing i did when i was looking at this pattern was I ran to, um, what did I do? I ran to the pattern page and I'm like, okay, so has anybody made this and made a hat out of it? And the question is, yes. Somebody has taken this chart and made a hat out of it. And then I started thinking, oh, that's so cute. I would love to do that. But anyways, if you do like mittens, I, I like mittens. I just don't wear them that much. I probably should because my hands are always cold, but I tend to, I just tend to stick to hats more. So the yarn weight for this is light fingering. The gauge is 38 stitches and 40 rows equal four inches. So it says you need a size uh, two millimeter and uh, 2.75 millimeter, which is a US zero and a US two. So you need 208 to 230 yards. And the pattern is in English and German. I love color work stuff. So beautiful. You, and then when you have like, when you buy the pattern and you have the chart, you can do whatever you want with the chart. You could put that on a sweater if you wanted. It says, as on the bee creative socks, the bees can now also fly on these fingerless gloves. This is how we catch spring and summer in very entertaining knitting lessons. A very nice project to use up leftovers and to practice stranded knitting. All light fingering yarns can be used with an approximate running length of 30, 320 to 400 meters for 100 grams. Sorry, I had to think about what those words meant for a second before I said it. Okay. And this will be the next one. This is the Luftmeer sweater. And it is by Valentina Bogdanova. Bogdanova, sorry. And this I was looking at. This is made with air and weight yarn. And the gauge is 18 stitches and 28 rows. This was also a pattern prize. Uh, a pattern prize picked and this was named for what word the german word for atmosphere i gave this name to the sweater because the pattern on the round yoke reminds me of hot air balloons floating in the sky if if you take a look at the pattern pictures it very much looks like that so i thought that was pretty cool the needle size that you're going to be using is a US 6, which is 4 millimeters, or a US 8, which is 5 millimeters. You need between 900 and 1300 yards. And the garment chest 
Well, let's see, hang on, what are we saying here? The garment chest measurement is between 96 and a half to 139 and a half centimeters. So that's 38 and a half to 55 and 75, seven, oh my gosh. Between 38 and a half and 55 and three fourths inches. Sorry, the languages on this are English and Russian. So pretty. The thing that I noticed about the yarn that they use is that it's very... I'm trying to think of the right word. Um, it's... I'll put up a link for the yarn and you guys can decide yourself. It's almost like it's, uh, okay, it says it's 55% alpaca, 35% cotton, 10% extra fine merino. It is 110 meters to 120 yards and 50 grams. So it says... It's a seamless sweater in top-down construction with an interesting lace pattern on the yoke, while the rest is worked in simple stockinette. The picture is shown in size small. So if that's something that interests you, you can take a look at that. And take a look at the yarn that they use as well. I have not heard of it before, but it really reminded me of something that I'd like to try to use. And the comments for the yarn were, were things like, you know, I normally don't like alpaca, but this yarn doesn't bother me at all. Or like, normally it's pick prickly on my skin, but I don't have the problem with this yarn. So I thought that that was really cool. I um, have definitely been known to have almost an irritation when I use when I use alpaca, especially around my neck. I can't do alpaca around my neck. I, I, it's just the way that it is. Okay, I think that this is the last one. Yes, I think this is the last pattern. I have a, a little bit more to show you, but this is the last pattern. This is the Ernest pattern by Hohi Locatelli. And this is also another pattern that was picked. This is a double-breasted sweater. And would you believe I have n I had no clue what double-breasted meant until I looked it up. And apparently it means that two sides of your, both sides of your sweater can come together and kind of overlap. And they mentioned something about men's, sweaters or jackets or overcoats having like double rows of buttons. So in case you didn't know, that's what it means. The yarn weight for this is fingering weight. It's 22 stitches and thir to 34 rows is four inches in stockinette. You need between 1,250 to 2,500 yards. And the sizes available are extra small to 4XL. Now, Ernest is my favorite sweater to wear. So cozy and light at the same time. The double seed stitch texture helps hold shape incredibly well and makes the simple cable stand out so well too. It features a shawl collar and is knitted seamlessly from the top. Designed from the Ernest desire of creating a favorite sweater. So I don't know if you can tell, but this also has cables along the back of the neck. And it's got this shawl collar, it's very pretty. It says that it's double breasted, you've got cables, provisional, seamless, worked flat. It's got a tag for shawl, and I wonder what that means. Hmm. What do you guys think it means? I have no clue, that's odd. So it says it's raglan sleeved, no ease, which I agree with, although once again, since I'm a big fan of ease, I would make it bigger. 
Oh, I love the way that it overlaps like that. It's so pretty. But this was also one of the pattern winners picks. So I always love Hohi Locatelli's patterns. Okay. Um, I got an email from Jimmy Beans Wool. And if you have not heard of them, they are a yarn store in, where is it? Nevada, I believe. And they sent me an email that had basically a whole bunch of uh, gifts for knitters. Yes. So I am going to put up uh, the QR code information to go see their basically different gifts that they thought would be useful if you have any knitters in your life. And I started looking through them and I'm like, oh, some of these are really cute. I want to share them. So the first one I wanted to show you was this right here. Hang on. Ah. Okay, so this is Where is it? It disappeared. Okay, I'll just talk about it. So they had a list of gifts and one of them was basically an a fiber pack of a pack of rainbow colored yarns and they were very small yarns um and they were sport weight and I'm putting up the picture and it was basically a good way to try a whole bunch of different colored yarns and I kept thinking that it would be amazing to use for amigurumi and that's pretty much where my mind has been. It has about 240 grams and the yardage is 732 but it was rainbow. Uh, I can't remember how many different color colors there were, but I'll put it down below. And most importantly, it was $40. And there were tons of different colors. And if you know anything about making amigurumi, it's kind of cruddy to have to buy a huge skein of yarn when you need like this much. When you need like, the red, right? I mean, it is what it is. But if you if you make amigurumi and you have this pack, then you're going to have every color of the rainbow for $40. So it was just something that I thought was pretty cool. The next one that I wanted to show you was these stitch markers. And they are super cute. They are called All Stitch Studio Seamless Stitch Markers. Now, the ones I'm showing you here are flower warm tones. You get, I think it's said between 28, 23, and 32. I'm putting it down below. You get that many, that many stitch markers, either if, if you buy small or if you buy large because they have both the small and the large. They also have a bigger pack, I think, for $24, where you get all sorts of different colors, but I just liked the smaller packs, so I thought those were cute. And $10 is a pretty decent price for what looks like a good amount of stitch markers. But, I mean, that's pretty much all all I have to show you. I just wanted to bring in some different holiday kind of gifting ideas for if you have any knitting friends or I, I don't know if you want to get yourself a gift because that's always fun. I know that my husband, whenever it gets close to either a birthday or Christmas, he's always like, well, what do you want? What kind of gifts do you want? And what are you looking for? Because he's not a knitter. He doesn't know um, what would be useful for me or what type of yarn I'd like. So sometimes he'll just get a gift card or I'll make like an Amazon wish list and he can pick something off of that. But 
since Jimmy Beans has actually gone ahead and created like a shop, basically a shopping list at, of different like tools, notions, smaller packs of yarn and things like that, somebody, you could give that list to somebody and say, hey, if you want, you can get me something off of this list. That'd be really cool. So just another idea. Okay guys, it is getting dark here and I am ready to go to sleep, unfortunately. Not really. I'm actually, we're gonna go eat dinner, but I'm getting pretty tired. It's been a long, it's been a long week and it has been a long winter already and it hasn't even started yet. My son will be done with his extracurricular activities, doing them to the extent he's doing them after December, so we're looking forward to that. But until then, I'll probably be recording a little bit more on Saturdays uh, for the time being. Okay guys, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that you have an awesome week. If you want to enter the giveaway, the pattern giveaway for next week, just leave a comment down below. And if you could, please give this video a thumbs up or hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.